What's up guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. We are in the age of information overload. Everywhere you look, there are Instagram posts, YouTube videos, articles, trying to overcomplicate training. That's why in today's video, we're taking it back to the basics. I wanna make sure that everybody thoroughly understands the fundamentals of strength training. That's why we're gonna do a technique breakdown of the big three, bench press, squat, deadlift. Any athlete needs to master these basic movements. Any body position that you'll ever see on a dirt bike is just a combination of these three movements. And if you already understand these exercises and you feel like you have lots of practice, use this video as sort of a technique refresher. Make sure you're doing everything that I list out in the video. And if you're not, this could instantly increase the amount of weight you can lift. All right, let's get to it. Now, of course, we always begin every workout by doing a dynamic warm up. You can raise your body temp by being on an elliptical for five to 10 minutes or walking on incline on a treadmill. And we always perform some type of moving stretches to activate our muscles, mobilize our joints, and even potentiate our nervous system and kind of get our mindset ready for what we're about to do. We're gonna start first with the bench press. With these big lifts, we always build our form from the ground up, starting with our base. You want to position your feet about shoulder width apart and pull them towards your torso until they're underneath your knees or even slightly behind your knees. Next, engage your glutes. This should give you the feeling that your lower body is almost kind of light on the bench. From here, you'll want to grip the barbell at shoulder width or just outside of shoulder width so that your wrists stay in line with your elbows at all times throughout the movement. Pull your shoulders back and puff out your chest. This should create just the slightest little gap between your lower back and the bench. Next, push your feet into the ground. Most people don't understand that one of the main driving forces behind your bench press is your feet pushing into the ground. Don't pick them up when the weight starts to get heavy. From here, lower the bar towards your chest at a controlled pace. The bar should touch your chest across your nipple line. Now without bouncing the bar off your chest, Press the weight back up and slightly back. This forms sort of a J-hook motion. Now if you can't get the bar all the way down to touch your chest, no big deal. Everybody's built a little bit different, they have slightly different shoulders and different ranges of motion, so just go as far as you can comfortably without pain. Last thing to think about, your elbows should always be pointing away from you at roughly a 45 degree angle. Try to avoid having your elbows flare out to 90 degrees as you press the weight back up. Alright, moving on to the squat. Again, we always build our form from the ground up. Set your feet at shoulder width apart or slightly wider than shoulder width. Position the barbell on your upper back on the meaty portion right below your neck. Be sure not to place the barbell on your neck. This would cause lots of pain and discomfort and can actually be dangerous. From here, grip the barbell just outside of shoulder width and pull down on the bar hard as if you were trying to do a pull up. This creates tension from your shoulders down to your waist making the weight feel almost like it's part of you. And the last thing before you initiate the movement, flex your core. This helps keep your spine in a safe, neutral position. Initiate the movement by unlocking your hips and sitting your rear end back as if you were trying to sit down in a chair. Lower yourself down until you get your knees to about 90 degrees and reverse the motion back to the top. Now lots of people ask me if they should squat down to parallel or if they should have more of an ass to grass approach and ultimately, my answer is always the same. It depends on your individual mobility, your body type, your experience level, and even your desired outcome. Generally, if you're trying to get stronger, squatting down to parallel will do plenty. However, if you're trying to build muscle, you may have better luck with ass to grass because you get a better stretch and contraction stimulating that hypertrophy. Whichever one you decide, make sure it fits your desired outcome. You can do it without pain and always start light if you're trying something new. Okay, that brings us to the last of the big three, deadlift. Now guess how we're gonna build our form? That's right, from the ground up. Begin the deadlift by positioning your feet at shoulder width with the balls of your feet directly under the bar. From here, we need to talk about grip. There are two main grips for the deadlift. These are matched and alternating. Match grip is a little more natural if you're a beginner and doesn't strain on the biceps as much as the alternating grip. However, it tends to be the weaker of the two grips. The alternating grip, having one hand over and one hand under, is the stronger grip because as the bar rolls out of one hand, it's actually rolling into the other hand, making it much easier to maintain a strong grip. However, this grip feels a little less natural and puts more strain on your bicep, which can lead to muscle strain or tears. Once you decide on your grip, you should grip the bar just outside of your knees so that the inside of your arms are actually up against your knees. 
Drop your rear end towards the ground and bring your chest up. Push the ground away from you as you lift the weight up. You should end up with your hips pushed through, making you a straight line from your head to your heels. Be sure to keep the weight as close to your body as possible, all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. It should literally be slightly dragging across your shins and your thighs. Control the weight back down to your starting position. Your head should be position neutral at all times. Gone are the days of looking at the ceiling as if it's a destination for the weight. I'm looking straight forward with my torso, keeping perfect spine alignment. Now the last tip about the deadlift is be sure that you bring the bar to tension or what's known as taking the slack out of the bar. This is when you pull up on the weight slightly and hear the weight sort of shift into tension, but you aren't pulling hard enough to lift the weight off the ground. Not only is this safer, but it actually puts you into more of an explosive state, making it easier to lift that heavy load. In a world where information overload is everywhere, sometimes it really helps to take it back to the basics. I'm really big on understanding the exercises I'm going to be performing in the gym, and I really am passionate about making sure that everybody understands the fundamentals of strength training. Learn these body movements. Master the basics. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.